What's going on, guys? Welcome back to episode two of the Capture Craft Podcast. I'm your host, Izzy, and we have our co-host, Jared. Yeah. Um, we are back with another episode for you guys. Today, we're going to be talking about um, some of the things of mastering your craft when it comes to photography and videography, and then how to turn from a hobby or a hobbyist into creating an actual business and a brand for yourself um, and what that looks like. Um, so, start it off, bro. What you been up to? What's the week look like for you? I know it's uh, been like a week and a half since we recorded last. Man. It's been busy, full time job got me, got me working, bro. But I feel that. I feel that. You been uh, shooting? What you been up to? I've been as far shooting. As content. I have been shooting actually. Uh, just having to find a way to work around the schedule, but I feel that. Did some real estate shoots. Uh, got some gym shoots. Yep. You know, trying to be like the swole photographer, man. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it, bro. I feel but, it. Um, yeah, we've been shooting though. We we've been shooting. Yeah, hell yeah. Outside of content, how the week been? <sighs> man, my job. I won't disclose what I do, <laughs> but just know there's a very important event coming up on May the 6th Yeah, for my job. Been busy. So we've been busy. I've been working it. long hours. I feel that, bro. I uh, kind of in the same boat, staying busy, uh, taking out a couple more editing clients and just uh, doing the stuff that I've been doing, you know what I'm saying? Really working to get this up and get it revolving on its own um, to the point where all we got to do is come in, record, upload the reels, and then we're ready to go, you know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. So. Looking forward to that. Um, then you already know, just taking care of clients, taking care of the day-to-day stuff, being a dad, all that type of stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, everything's been good. Can't complain. Can't complain, bro. Uh, so let's get right into it, bro. Let's talk about mastering your craft and some tips and tricks you have for aspiring photographers and videographers. So you can start all the way like, think base level, I just bought my camera. What would you tell a photographer and videographer or both of them together, what they should be looking for, what they should be doing Mm-hmm. in order to advance to that next level? Uh, honestly, if I had someone to tell me, like, kind of give me a guide when I first started, yep. it'll be pretty much learn as much as you can before you get out there and start shooting. For sure. Like, that's, that's the most important part, just, like, continuing to learn mm-hmm. and figuring out what it is that, you know, what type of style or what type of niche you want to uh, shoot for. Yep. And then the second part of that is go out and shoot for free. For sure. A lot of people, they, they don't want you to do that. Right. But, and in your head, you're like, I need to make some money, but that's the only way you can really build your portfolio up. Most definitely. So When no, you say go out there and learn, what would be the main things that you would tell somebody to learn? Or the main things you wish somebody would have told you to learn in the beginning? Well, I say the the most important things to learn first are camera settings, how to operate your camera, right? Because yeah. what I get, like, what a lot of people get misconstrued is they think the better camera that you buy or the more <laughs> expensive camera you buy, yeah. it, it speaks to the quality. But no, it's like you just knowing what to do with that camera. Right. Because honestly, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, both of us can go out and do with a, you know, Sony A7S, I mean, not A7S3, but A7 III. Yep. We can do the same thing we're doing with the, you know, A4, yep. S3, stuff exactly. like that. And those are two completely different camera systems. Exactly. And on the, on the flip side of that is we can now go to those bigger cameras and now I know what we're doing rather than just, exactly. oh, I got this FX6 in my hand and I can record a video and it's going to look dope. You exactly. Know? So we know how to break that down and like what to look for in holding a bigger, better, uh, more expensive setup. You know exactly. It's, a, it's an entirely different game. Most definitely. But if you can master those settings, and I'll tell you, you just got to master that, <laughs> the, the exposure triangle. Yep. ISO, aperture, shutter speed. That's it. You master that, then you start to get more into like picking, your shot, picking and choosing your shots right. and then editing. So yep. that workflow should be where you should really start. Just kind of sure. like learning your camera settings, how to set up the scenes for what you want to portray, and then learning how to edit. What, uh, when you started off, what was the thing that like you learned first? So for me uh, specifically, I was more worried about getting really high quality shots, really good looking shots, if you will, mm-hmm. rather than the camera settings. The se- camera settings came second for me. Um, but in your uh, case, what, what was that process like? To be honest, I used to shoot on auto. I'm not <laughs> gonna lie to you. Um, I gotta be, I gotta be yeah. humble about it. Not like, even facts. We all, we all started there, bro, for sure. I used That's to shoot on nothing but auto until I figured out like, 
that won't get you exactly what you're looking for. Right. It gets you what the camera thinks. Exactly. It'll get you close. It'll get it, you a good shot. That's, exactly. And that's what I'm saying is I started on auto and I was more so worried about I want this frame to look perfect. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, and the, for me, it was like switching over from being an athlete to now being behind the camera. It's like yeah. I knew like the angles and stuff that I wanted to capture, but it's like, like you said, now learning the exposure triangle and all that type of stuff and then mm -hmm. the camera settings allowed me to now elevate those shots. Um, and, and the interesting fact that most people may not know is I actually didn't get a camera to be a videographer. I used to do music. Okay, I got you. So I, I got it to kind of like vlog the experience yep. of like trying to make music yep. with me and my homeboys and stuff like that. And then when I thought about it, I was like, man, maybe I can turn this into something. So right. I started going to shoot at a boxing gym. Okay, I got you. I started shooting at this uh, nutrition shop and yep. I just kind of practiced the craft. And then it came later where they was like, hey, you getting better. We actually <laughs> right. want to pay you to do exactly. this. And I was like, oh, you want to pay me? But then at that moment, it, it, it shook me because I'm like, oh, am I good I enough? I'm ready for that. Yeah. So you kind of have to, that's, that's another important thing when you're doing this. You have to like turn off that mode of like being unsure yep. if you can do this and know that you are the expert in this case so sure. when a person wants to actually hire you for this you are the expert most definitely you're not you know the person that was shooting for free anymore <laughs> you're not you're and the that's expert. a that's a hard thing that even like like you said when I, when it came time to it, it was like okay i'm getting paid now for shoots there's like another level of expectation that comes with it exactly you know what I'm saying? And, and that was something even for myself like balancing that and like understanding that a like if I'm shooting for free and I fuck up, like it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Now someone's paying me, especially deposit ahead of time and plan on paying me after the project is complete or after the shoot is complete, whatever it might be. Like now there's another sense of urgency and like um, demand that comes with that. It's tough and it's tough because you can't get that shot back. No, never. But when you're shooting for free, it's like, I didn't got all the shots right. in the world. Exactly. But now you're overthinking it when you're getting paid. Yep. It's like, what if I miss this shot? What if I miss that shot? And then yep. you start panicking instead of being in your creative zone. And building off that, it, we can relate this back to um, the first question of like, tips for up and coming videographers and photographers is like, how many shots would you say you take at like, just say a two hour shoot, whether it's photo or video, how, or not even how many, but like, how do you balance that number or how do you figure out like, okay, I have enough shots or how do you, if you're capturing an event, obviously you have to keep going, but like if you're doing whatever it might be, and you're like, okay, now I think I have enough shots for the final edit. How do you go about that? Because I know how I do it, and I, maybe you want me to explain first, but. It depends. Yeah. Right? Because it's, it's, it's like when you come back home to edit, at the end of the day, you can have hours worth of footage, but it's only going to be right. 30 seconds to a minute. Right. So it's kind of tough to say, all right, how many shots do I need to do this? But is more so asking the question how many shots do i need to portray a story yep how many shots do i need to say if someone random was watching this that they want to be at this event yeah, yeah yeah so you can make a shot list based off of that but i think for the most part you have to get like key moments for sure and you know people laughing so you don't get the of course don't get the same shot over right. and over but and sometimes it is nice to get multiple though exactly and that's what that's kind of what i get wanted to get into is like when i first started bro i would sit there and press record the whole night or the whole day whatever it might be and i would have maybe if a four-hour event i might come home with hour and a half two hours of footage for a reel and like you said that's going to be a minute long at the most you know what I'm saying maybe a minute and a half if you really want to push it but like I got to a point where it was like, okay, I feel like I'm recording because I want the people that are hiring me or the people that I'm working for to feel like I'm doing something, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And now the more comfortable I get and the more um, established I get and people are now hiring me for my ability, I am able to kind of sit back and be like, okay, they hired me for a reason. Mm -hmm. I don't need to feel like I need to put on a show for them just to say that I'm recording, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, and I think that's something that's really big is like, you have to have that self-confidence in yourself that's like, okay, I know I've got 9, 10, 11, 12, maybe 15 really good shots that I remember capturing. And then from there, building off those, you know what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. something that I try to do is like, like you said, building the story while you're going, but like realizing when I have a really good clip mm -hmm. and like, okay, now I know I have this in the back of my mind. What can I do to now elevate that in the story? You know what I'm saying? And then there's a, another side to that too, where if you feel like 
you don't know what to get, you can actually ask the client, like, you know, what do they have any preferences in what you want and what they want in the video or what right. they want you to capture. Right. That always helps as well. Exactly. So then when they if they tell you anything specific, you can basically make your shot list around what they said specifically because yep. now all other types of ideas start to come around that one idea for sure sometimes you just need that jump start and i think that's a that's another thing that we can touch on is communication not only in the sense of what are you looking for but like being able to talk to people that was something that, that i was like raised on is like being able to talk to people and being able to understand your environment understand the type of people that you're around and how those conversations need to go but then mm -hmm. also building off that now in running a business is like I need to learn how to talk to someone on the phone. If, if I'm working with a client and they want to get on a phone call or FaceTime to talk about the shoot that's coming up, I need to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. If they get off the phone and they don't feel comfortable, the chances are you're not going to have that shoot. You know what I'm yes. saying? And then, like, again, like I said, building off that is, goes back to what you were just saying is when you're at a shoot or building up to a shoot, being able to communicate with the client and like, hey, this might be what I'm thinking. You said you want an event recap, whatever it might be. This is what is playing in my head. But what do you want? Because at the end of the day, like, I can make a dope video, and if I'm giving it to you and you hate it, then that's all that matters. You know what I'm saying? I just put mm -hmm. this on my story the other day. It's like, the only opinion of the content that I care about or that matters is the person that's paying. If they post it and 900 people say they fucking hate the video, but they loved it, that don't matter to me. You know what I'm saying? Because we communicated, we figured out what the deliverable was, was and what they wanted it to look like. And if that's what they wanted, then that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? And nine times out of 10, when, you know, it's, it's crazy because you'll get the clients that'll be like, oh man, you the expert, do, <laughs> right, you know, sure. do what you think. You yeah. got full creative freedom. And then they'll come back and be like, hey, yeah, did, you get, did you get this shot? Right. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> I, I didn't get that shot. Right, it's always an uncomfortable conversation, especially when they said like, oh yeah, you got it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and For then sure. it's like, but the thing is, and that's what I learned too, and I'm still learning mm -hmm. this, is like, don't avoid it, just be honest. For sure. Right, and that's another key thing I wish I would've known uh, coming up, is like, how you said, communication is key. Yep. When you are responding to people, even if you don't feel like doing the shoot or they're not doing like, what you like your price they can't pay or not can't pay your price but <laughs> they try to negotiate yeah, price with sure. you it's not that's not a matter or reason to not respond exactly. it's just you respond and just be you know learn the business side of things exactly it's, it's a business at the end of the right. day so you you're gonna have to respond and communicate and say well hey uh, i don't think i can do that but you know if you got somebody else you can refer them to yep refer them to them yep but you know I'd it doesn't say, have to be a burn bridge based off of a exactly. miss like not misjudgment but like not being able to do what they want you to do exactly you know because i can be honest when i say this man i've i've burned a lot of bridges yeah. just by not communicating or i feel that being afraid to say you know this is my price i'm gonna stand on right. it or just being just didn't just not wanting to do the shoot and that's, think, uh, that's okay. And I think a lot of that comes from just having those uncomfortable conversations. Because for whatever reason, and not for whatever reason, because we all know the reason, but like whenever it comes to talking money, it always gets uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? It's almost always easier to do it over text. It's almost always easier to do it over the phone. But like when you're in person, especially talking money is always uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's where I feel like a lot of us, and it, like you said, it happened to you, it happened to me in the beginning a lot too, is like, Yes, we're gonna have to talk money, you know what I'm saying? If we're gonna be serious about this and we want to have our clients take us serious about this, it's like money has to be communicated and communicated like very clear. On um, And what I always try to do is like, the second money gets brought up is I'll tell you my price, but I also wanna know exactly what you want. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's like, don't tell me that, hey, I want you to shoot an event recap and shoot a video. And then all of a sudden now at the end, I send you the video, you send payment, and now you're looking for photos too. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. let's communicate everything that we need to have done um, on my end from the content standpoint and then on your end from the payment standpoint. Mm -hmm. And let's bring that together and let's just talk about everything that we need to ahead of time so there's no misunderstanding. You know what I'm saying? And you got you to gotta keep a record of it. I mean, to. honestly, I, I built great relationships with for people sure. that I shoot for. Yep. So it's not, it's not, it's really a real understanding, no contracts needed. Right. Because the delivery is always good, you know what I'm For saying? Sure. Like, I'm a trustworthy person. They're they're yep. trustworthy, so it's it's really never an issue. 
but I say this outside of the people that you develop personal relationships, like new clients and yep. stuff like that. You gotta have you gotta have gotta some have sort of sort of like documented. Yep. Like you have to until you actually build that relationship right. with that person, you can decide to keep the paperwork right. or you Pull know dis- it. Yeah, dis- yeah. discard it. But you gotta bring that paperwork into yep. that because that's what's gonna say, all right, this is what you asked for. This is the deliverable. Yep. If you don't have that, <laughs> even if you start just now starting shooting, uh, just now starting to shoot, yep. make sure you have it documented of what that client right. wants. Because I promise you, at the at the end of the day, I I've had it done before. I go and shoot, do the promo video, yep. and then they be like, oh, I was hyped for this. And then next thing you know, where's the full video? <laughs> it's like, you know we in the age of promo, right? right. Like I didn't know you wanted a full video, <laughs> exactly. but that was just no communication. Exactly. On that. And that's what I was going to say, too, is that goes back to the original or my point was communication. You know what I'm saying? We were just talking about this the other day while um, we was at the run club. It's like there's time and place where it might fall on you. It might fall on them. But then a situation like that is like that falls on both of us. You know what I'm saying? Neither of us communicated. Neither of us knew exactly what we wanted or if we did, we didn't communicate that to a point where the other person knew what the deal was, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And that's something that I feel like, especially starting off, uh, I struggled with a lot. And then now um, looking at other people and helping other people is like, people just don't, they don't want to have those uncomfortable conversations, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And, and it's definitely understandable, but once you do, and once you can like get over that fact, if you want to call it that, get over that, it'll allow you to move so much smoother, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Everybody knows like, once you communicate, you're good. You know what I'm saying? We both know what we want. I know how much I'm getting paid. You know exactly what you're going to get from me. And there's nothing more that needs to be said. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And like you said, having those contracted agreements, even if it's as simple as, I just told someone this today because they were talking about shooting, um, reached out to me asking about pricing um, and then asked about, hey, should I be setting up contracts? Blah, blah, blah. Even if it's as simple as in the Venmo request, putting one YouTube video, four reels, exactly. 15 to 20 photos. That right there should solidify you enough to where you're covered. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's like, this is what we agreed on. This is what you literally paid on. And so anything else after that is like, wasn't communicated, you know what I'm saying? Or wasn't finalized, you know what I'm saying? And the only, the only trick I can give to anybody mm-hmm. that's not as great with communicating their price and whatnot is to have a system set up to where if I click on a link, it take me to your pages of like prices Price. and, and whatnot. Yep. And that way, that gives that person like you know you you should respond, right. but you can respond to a DM a little easier, saying, "Hey, all my pricing it's and listed. packages are listed in, on my website, yep. or are listed on you know the link in my bio." Right. For sure. That way is no excuse because a lot of times people are going to come to you to negotiate up front. Oh, They've yeah, already yeah. looked at that link, yep. but they're going to come to you to try, you know, <laughs> take the price down and yep. negotiate something with you. And so having that, you know, that system in place can kind of put up that barrier to where you don't really have to talk to them. Right. But, you know, just refer them to the link in the bio. Yep. And like I said, you should talk to them and build a relationship, but that's the first step of knowing if a client is for you or right. not. So, and that's something game. that that is free game. That's, <laughs> and that's something that I personally am not really a big fan of is sending someone somewhere else to figure out the answer that they're trying to get. Mm-hmm. Whether that's when they DM me a question about content or, or posting or what they should be doing as a videographer, photographer, or if it comes to pricing or, and talking to a client, it's like I I don't know. To me, that just rubs me the wrong way. It's like yes, I understand the professionalism that comes with it, mm-hmm. but like at least for us and the, the space that we're in, it's like we're in the social media era of everything and it's mm-hmm. like, or, or the social media area of everything, I should say. And it's like, why not just respond to that DM? You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. I'm not saying you're wrong in doing that or, or saying that because I, I do know a lot of people that do that. But for me, that's, to me, that makes it almost more uncomfortable than like a turnoff. Mm-hmm. If, if someone DMs me and asks me like, hey, how much do you charge for a shoe? Or emails me and asks me, how much do you charge for a shoe? Or ask my rates. If I was to send them a link and be like, hey, all my links, are on, all my stuff is on my website, to me, as a client, that would be a turnoff. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's like, bro, you literally could have just explained all that to me in this DM. Mm-hmm. But maybe that's just me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no. That's why I say it's, it's based on if you're comfortable with communicating or For not. Because sure. we, obviously, we can DM and be like, all right, this is our price. Right. 
you know, and then on the other hand of that, you got other, it, and it's also dependent upon the client as well, because you got, quote unquote, I say older clients that mm -hmm. prefer like looking at a right. website. Emails so it just depends on who's coming to you and asking right. these questions. And I questions. will say, I will say, cycling back on what I said, I do have pricing structure built like on a PDF form. Mm -hmm. okay. Where it's like, and okay, that, I'll send you a screenshot of it rather than, and then explain it rather than mm -hmm. just directing you to a website. Because you, you, you have to have it ready because I had, I, I think, to. I had a, I had one instance where, you know, they're asking about pricing and packages and mm -hmm. I ain't have it together. Yep. I was just kind of like spitballing and I didn't even know my own pricing exactly. at that point. So figure out your pricing for whatever you, <laughs> whatever a, service that's you That's another need. big tip back like, to the original question. We, we can go down a whole rabbit hole about pricing, but figure out your pricing before you do anything because the way videography and photography is set up and structured is niche based at this point. Yep. So it's like what you charge for a walkthrough in real estate mm -hmm. may not be the same thing you charge to go do a promo shoot at a video uh, at a gym. Absolutely not. Or it may not be the same you charge to go shoot a basketball and game. And also on top of that, the, the price that I might charge a brand is not going to be the same price that I charge Jared Harris who mm -hmm. wants a video for the same exact thing. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Like, and that's something that I don't, we talked about this a little bit last time, but I, I think a lot of people get caught up in the numbers and they get caught up in, oh, this one brand might've paid me X, Y, Z, or they said that they would pay me and maybe we didn't do the shoot, whatever it might be. But it's like that brand and the ability that they have and the capabilities and the financial backing that they have is going to be a lot different than an individual. Exactly. You know bro. what I'm saying? And I think that's something that not a lot of people think about and, and more people need to think about is like, the, the price that, for me example, the price that I'm gonna charge Gymshark for a photo shoot is not gonna be the same price that I'm gonna charge a single individual for the same exact deliverable. Exactly. And that, the reason, I'll go into that, um, and we could get into pricing a little bit, uh, we don't have to go super deep, but like, the reason for that is because what Gymshark is going to do with those photos and those videos and those deliverables is gonna be the complete opposite of what an individual is gonna do. If somebody books me for a shoot and it's an individual, nine times out of 10, they might use it for a promo on their mm -hmm. own Instagram for like online coaching or something like that, or they're just getting posted on social media. But now when I shoot Gymshark and I shot their Black Friday stuff, um, which I'm blessed to do, uh, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. it's like, I went to their event in Miami and saw my pictures all, over, all across the wall. Again, which I'm super blessed and thankful for the opportunity, but it's like, I now understand more of the business side of it. It's like, I'm not just taking pictures for your Instagram. I'm not just taking pictures for your athlete's Instagram. These are things that you're now using to promote yourself, promote your event, promote your products, and essentially will be getting paid hundreds of thousands of millions of possibly dollars based on that image, you know what I'm saying? Because you, you gotta think about it from that standpoint too, like, Gymshark is about to use this to really monetize right. and get their brand out a lot Which more. Which they should so, be doing. And they're gonna do a lot more content. They're gonna get a lot more content from you. Right. But the thing about negotiating and you know big brand deals is they're not gonna tell you their budget beforehand. No, no, absolutely not. And if they know, like it's all businesses do this. And I say this, if you don't have a structure for your own, like for your business and like, again, pricing guide, they will come to you <laughs> and prey on you Yep. and be like, so how much would you charge us for this? Right. And then they may have a budget of $10,000. <laughs> or or 15, 50 times what you just told them. Exactly. They're not gonna tell you. And I will say that going back to that is my brother used to own this bar in Minnesota that we used to work at. And no offense to any of the employees if you're listening to this, but it's like, we would have these anywhere from 16 to 22 year olds, college kids, graduating high school, whatever it might be, where it's like they're getting paid 14, 15, 16 dollars an hour, right? And it's like, in our eyes, we might even talk about it as managers, as GMs, and my brother being the owner, of like, we value this person at this amount. Mm -hmm. If they were to come today and ask for a raise of, at $18, we would give it to them, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of times when those conversations came around, they're looking for 75 cent raise, 50 cent raise, maybe a dollar raise at the very most, and to us, it's like, that's all you want? If that's all you want, bet I'm cool with it, bro. Because in my heart, I value you here, but as a business, I'm not gonna tell you that. Exactly. Because our main thing is to make money. Exactly. And if you wanna work here and work undervalue yourself, we'll do that. <laughs> you and know it, what I'm saying? And there's nothing and wrong And it's something with that. that sounds, that, uh, it sounds so shitty to say, but like everywhere that employs people does that. There's nothing, but there's nothing wrong with that. Because again, at the end of the day, 
it's, it's a business. And you really have to know the business size of things to kind of capitalize. Most definitely. And you also have to know, you know, sales. Right. We have to know sales. Yep. It's more at this point, when you start advancing your career as a videographer and photographer, you have to start to learn sales. Right. Because like you said, the communication piece is key. How much you charge is key. Yep. All of that is key to where, you know, oh, and the, the experience is key. Yep. So all of that ties into if you're going to be able to lock this client in or not. Because they're probably going to, like, they'll go, they can go <laughs> somewhere else, bro. There's so many creators in this in this world. Right. Especially but, if you're directly in Houston, like we are, like, I can name probably off the top of my head, 50 different videographers, photographers. Yeah. And what, and then that's the thing, what's going to make you stand out? Right. And every single one of them, depending on, we could give every single one of them a paper and give them the deliverables to a shoot. And I would hope that we have 50 different answers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, so building off that, what, uh, what are things that you started at and then now look at in terms of like setting your price? Oh man. And this is one of the, I, I will say, this is one of the worst questions I hate getting because I'll, I'll, I'll kind of tell you right now based on mine, just based off my answer, but it's like, I hate telling someone pricing because I don't know what you value your time at, what you think of your quality of work, and how bad you actually want to do the shoot. You know what I'm saying? Those are three big things that I can't tell you, um, but play a big role in my consideration of pricing. But okay. I'll let you go first. I got to turn this up, man. I got to go super <laughs> saiyan on All this. Right, go you got to lift up from yeah. the seat. But honestly, bro, I say this. One of the biggest things is, you know, the one, the type of shoot. Yep. Two, the location of the shoot. Yep. And then three, the timing of the shoot. For sure. So break all those down. Type, uh, location, and timing. So type, you know, uh, birthdays, events, whatever you, you I guess, uh, basketball games. Because yep. studio shoots, am I going to have to bring lights? Exactly. Gonna, how many cameras do I need to bring? Exactly. Uh, yep. So that's, oh, forgot that, equipment too. Yep. So that's another, <laughs> that plays another part. Exactly. If you're doing a podcast, that's completely different. Right. You can either ask for a main angle or you can ask for three different angles. Right. So that's going to be a cost. Right. Because those, all three of those cameras cost, right? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? They're so not, They're not showing up to the shoot for free. Exactly. <laughs> so those are factors that play in terms of like the type of shoot. Right. Because you got to know the, you got to know uh, the logistics. Right. Do I need lights? Do I need mics? Do I need, uh, you know, how many cameras I need? How many lenses do I need to how bring? Lenses, the angles they all look of for? that. Yep. So do I need a second shooter? That's the, exactly. <laughs> so that's See, this is, the, this is why I say I hate talking pricing with everybody because it's like, <laughs> bro, I could tell you a number that I would charge for that same exact shoot, but it's not going to make sense. One, for possibly where you are, because most of us are not going to be in the same place, mm -hmm. whether that's you're above me, below me at the same level. And also it's like, I'll add to that is, I don't know what you value yourself at. You exactly. know what I'm saying? And that, that's something that I think plays a big role into all this is like, how much time do you have to edit? What's your availability for the next two weeks? What's, you know what I'm saying? Like all that stuff plays a role into yeah. finding out your price. And we ain't even got to the editing aspect of it. <laughs> right. Because that, it takes hours upon hours, days. Days. You know what I'm saying? Is weeks. It, is weeks. Yeah. I didn't want to say it, but yeah, weeks. weeks. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you want a faster turnaround time, you got to pay for that. So all of that adds up going to the second point. I think I said location, yep. right? Location, bro. Uh, you got to think if I live, nobody told me to live downtown. <laughs> right. That's not my same, fault. But at the same time, <laughs> if you telling me, you know, yeah, man, we shooting in Sugar Land. Bro, why would I, <laughs> why would I take? 150 200 to drive to drive to sugarland 40 minutes and back and on the way back it's gonna be an hour and a half <laughs> and that's basically your gas <laughs> right so no literally i need to charge for gas too right you know what yep. i'm saying exactly and that's so, all stuff that that gets broken down into the cost bro and mo most most of the time like especially with like basketball games a lot of the schools aren't in like the, a lot of the premier schools for basketball mm -hmm. aren't in houston okay they're in the suburbs right. like pearland sugarland okay, missouri city uh, I won't even say Woodlands or nothing like that, but <laughs> you know, they're not, they're not in the loop. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of the Katie. Yeah. So 
uh, if you want to make that drive, I can't make that drive for, you know, <laughs> for nothing, for nothing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Then I got to pull out this camera. I mean, if I'm going to do it, I might as well drive, you know, drive down to KD and then pull out my iPhone to record your game. <laughs> right. Because that's how much you, that's you pay. You that's what you're paying <laughs> for. That's what I'm just saying. Right. But at the end of the day, it's like having a set price. It, it's tough to have set prices sure. unless you already like established like, look, this is what this price is going to be for this shoot, right. regardless of where you are, regardless of how much time you want. Because, oh, uh, side note, sidebar. Yeah. If I I hear this so much, yeah, man, I just want to do you know like a thirty second reel. You know, it's probably gonna take thirty minutes. I wish it did. I wish it I did. I wish it did. <laughs> I've gotten that so many yeah. times. Yeah, or it's like, it hey, bro, does. I only need five pictures. We can just do it real quick in thirty minutes. Five pictures turn into ten. Right. Then it turned into two hours. Then it turned into two hours to get this quick video because now you got the ten pictures too quick. <laughs> so while we down here, we you might as well get the, uh, the whole you video. Might take the video too? Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, do it with my phone. Yeah, that's tough. What your camera look like though? <laughs> <laughs> Not a fact, bro. Like, that's how it be though, yep. bro. Like, so to sum that all up, I think I had one more point. I guess. What was that? Uh, the amount of hours. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's tough to say, all right, because you can show up for an hour shoot, but it's two different sides to that. As a videographer, sometimes in an hour, you don't believe you can get the shots you need to carry out the shoot, yep. so you stay a little longer. But then the other side of that is like, you only really paid for an hour, right. so I got to get up out of here and go. <laughs> yep. And that goes back to the experience that we like to provide and if you add that into your shoot or your pricing, you won't have to worry about a timing, exactly. a timing thing. Yep. And that's why I say when people rebuttal about like, yeah, I only need 30 minutes. <laughs> but then it's like, in my experience, right. you need a little more time than 30 minutes. Because to get, from the second I pull up, we're going to talk for five. You're going to be getting ready for five. And now we only got 20 minutes. Exactly. And, and at 30 minutes, I'm packing my fucking shit up. You exactly. know what I'm saying? And that's um, why people be so confused when we be like, yeah, for one reel, we charge 500. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, but that's the thing. That 500 going to include me getting to that location, yep. spending more than an hour with you. Cause Most it, definitely. Even though, like I said, it's all about experience yep. and, and over-delivering. That's what we do as videographers and creators. Right. Some people may just stop it at one hour, but <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day, if you pay that premium, we're going to make sure you get the best experience possible. Right. That's that's on everything. Everything. So we're gonna stay we gonna stay longer than an hour. Until it's necessary. We're gonna stay and we're gonna get the shots that we need and we're paid, so it's like taken care of. We have no we have no issue. Like there's no real issue, bro. So I think those three things you have to look at it and say it may seem like a lot, but if you attract the right clients and the right, you know, customers then at the end of the day, they gonna pay. They gonna pay the price with no hesitation, as exactly. long as you're able to deliver. And that's a that's another thing we should touch on before I, I'm about to get into one more point about this before we move on. Is like the experience that you leave a client with will get you paid. Exactly. So if I charge this one person, and and I will say, depending on what you will get you paid, depending on what you charge originally. So like you said, if I charge 150 for this reel, and now this client wants to shoot again and now I'm ready to charge 600 or 750 or a thousand, whatever it might be, it's like, all right, now there's gonna be some type of disconnect. But it's like, if you value yourself for the first time, you're, you tell them, hey, this is the first time, first time working together, I'll give you a discount, da, 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 make it 350. Mm -hmm. Th then if you charge the next time and it's 500, that'll be a little bit more exactly. relatable, you know what I'm saying? And, and I think a lot of people will get caught up in, one, they want that first shoot, so they're just ready to take whatever for it, or, they want the money, so they're, they don't care about the shoot. They just, I'm gonna charge you X, Y, Z, and this is my price, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, those people, in my opinion, the people who are chasing the money are gonna under deliver and won't have the second experience. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so the last thing I'll touch on while we're giving um, the tips and tricks to the aspiring videographers, photographers, is the editing process. Now this is something, obviously we have photo, we have video, we have audio. Um, Photo is something that I took a long time to like really develop and now I feel like is almost overtaking my videography aspect mm -hmm. um, because so I will say I started off 
wanting to, like video is my thing, you know what I'm saying? I want to record video, it still is. Um, but while I started elevating my video, I noticed my photo was lacking. So I feel like I, my, if you want to put it on a scale, my video got to like here and my photos were like here. And so now my video is still growing, but my photos are coming up a lot faster to the point where I would say they're almost tied. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like if somebody was to hire me for a photo shoot only before, I would like be like, ah, I don't know about that. And now if someone was to do that, I'll be like, all right, bro, let's get it. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm, I'm going to give an unpopular opinion, bro, because I would say the biggest misconception is thinking that just because someone has a camera, they do both. That's what I was about to say, too, is like, like I, knew, I knew where you were going with that. Is I also, building on top of that, I think it's a lot easier to be a videographer first and start shooting photos after yes. rather than vice versa. And yes. I'm not saying it's easy in either regard or that you're going to be great at either one, but I think it's harder to be a photographer and edit photos and do all that whole process and then cycle back and learn how to edit video. Yes, bro. And you might be great at getting the shots and all that type of stuff, but the whole editing process when it comes to video is leaps and bounds to a certain extent above photo. And I, and I, I say this, bro, and the thing, it's hard to break this down. We, we getting into some good yeah, stuff yeah. We go, There's so much that, that, that we can break down with this. To be honest with you, and I ain't gonna lie to you, bro, I struggle with photos. Yeah. Now, I will say this. Now, if you just want candid you oh, know, yeah, yeah. types of stuff, like shots from an event, shots while you're shooting video, that's easy. <laughs> yeah, like, for sure. I get to, like, that's easy. As long as you know camera settings and you know how to shoot, yep. that's easy. Or if you have someone who knows how to pose really it, well and exactly. they do that, you know what I'm saying? But when you really get into a bag of photography, yep. I'm talking about the lighting, yep. setting up your camera flashes to, you know, off camera flash. Yep to where this light flashes when you back it. here. <laughs> like all of that stuff in photography, bro. And you know, what gets me is, it's, it's kind of the same creative process almost, where when you're shooting in like S-Log, like video and S-Log and mm -hmm. stuff like that, it's almost the same kind of like creative process where you have to color grade it oh, and yeah. stuff like that. But man, I done Retouching seen, and cleaning up the skin and doing all that type of stuff. I didn't see people like, shoot photos bro like in broad daylight but it's dark yeah and the subject is clear but i get it it's probably all about layering and oh, stuff yeah, definitely. but that, those editing aspects are completely different bro yeah, for sure like i done seen people turn these photos into something that wasn't even there right and it looks so natural natural and real and i'm like the colors look crazy i'm like you are talented yeah I know there's one photographer that I will say, and I look forward to having him on the podcast too. His name's Alex. He shoots at Alpha Land a lot. He, like when I look at his photos, I'm like, I don't think I've ever seen a better photographer than him. And he shoots the same content that I do at the gym. And that's crazy. But a lot of his stuff is like pose modeling stuff, but still it's to the point where it's like, bro, I, I don't know how you did that with what we have going on right here. You know bro, what I'm saying? And that's, that's what I'm saying. Like with the setting, it's right. like, how did you do that? And it's, <laughs> And, and I know a lot of it, uh, especially in his process, comes down to the editing process and he takes that very serious and he like uh, prides himself on that. But like, it just doesn't make any sense to me how he's able to do that. But I'm, t I'm telling you right now, bro. And, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to get a lot of slack for this. <laughs> but we as videographers, of course, we can do both. Right. Photographers can do both. Yeah. But I've seen it happen so many times. Photographers struggle with video right and edits right the same way videographers struggle trying to edit photos like for sure. photographers yeah yeah for sure it's like it's and like you get you just get the most basic on either side you know what I'm saying? if a videographer tries to edit photos you're going to get a they might be good pictures but it's going to be very basic editing mm -hmm. if a photographer tries to edit video color grading all that type of stuff like it might be a good video but it's more than likely going to be very basic it's just cut by cut yep you know, capturing the scene. Exactly. They don't know like the transitions we thinking about. Right. They don't know They're how to, how to mix stuff. music into yep. it. The same way we probably don't know how to retouch. Exactly. We don't know how to do, you know, layering. Yep. Cause I, I've been in Photoshop. Yeah. I've been in Photoshop. <laughs> I don't even get into Photoshop. <laughs> I, I've been in Photoshop. I don't do photo. Like if I'm editing a picture, I'm not going into Photoshop, bro. bro. Everything I do, Lightroom Classic. That's Lightroom it. Classic, bro. That's it. At the end of the day, I ain't finna try to replace nope. no background or do nothing. <laughs> I ain't doing no AI generated nothing. Nigga. So <laughs> it's a it's a real respect between both. But yeah. if you can do both, hey, you you dope. You know what I'm saying? Most definitely. But it's it's tough for sure. 
All right, so now uh, transitioning from that tips and like um, advice to younger photographers and videographers, let's get into more of becoming an actual business and not necessarily in the legal aspect of it or creating LLC, all that type of stuff, which definitely is a part of it we could touch on, but more so how you carry yourself from a hobbyist or someone just who enjoys taking photos and videos, someone who does it for fun, does it with their free time, into now, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. Even if it's to the extent of what you're doing, like I'm still charging people for what I'm doing, even though it's not my full-time job. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All the way up to people like me where it's our full-time job, that's all we do. And even beyond that is like production company and people who are maybe not necessarily behind the camera, but still running a business with media. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, would, what was the main thing that you did when you noticed, or when, I, I should start with this. When was the moment you knew like, like it's time to start charging people? Who? That's tough. I think for me, and I think it was a, it was a one, it was one video I mm -hmm. created. And I looked and I was like, I showed it to all my homeboys. <laughs> I did, I was like, hey bro, look at this video. Cause I was, I was shocked myself. Yep, especially like with the, the editing aspect of it. I can't remember the exact video, but it was a, a video that I created that sparked the the actual, hey, you need to start charging for this now. Right. And so again, you start to, when you when you first start shooting, and like I said, I shot for free for like three to six months. Yep. It's, it's tough because now you, you're questioning yourself if you really want to do this. Right. If you don't get money from it off rip. Yep. But then, at that point where you make a video and you promote it and you get that, you receive that, you know, that feedback and yep. it's crazy. That feeling that you feel when you edit the video. Exactly, yep. you say, you receive that same feedback and not saying you need validation from people nah. to do it, but once you receive that feedback, you'll be like, that's when it clicked. Yep. It's like, oh shit, bro. <laughs> Maybe I can't do something with this. You can, you can charge for this because right. your creative process is different. Now you're standing out. Right instead of trying to replicate what you see on the internet already. Exactly. And like I said, the other part of that was, I knew I should start charging when in my head, and this may not be the best, like, this may not be the best way to go yeah. about it, but for me, it was, how can I beat the, vi the video that I just created that I thought was my best shit? Yep. How, do, how can I top that? Exactly. And that's when I started learning, like, you need to charge. Oh, I actually care about this. Like, maybe I should be charging. Exactly. Now I feel that. It's tough. But. For sure. I will say, I to me, so I kind of fell into being paid, which is really nice. Um, like I said, my brother owned a, a restaurant or a bar and grill back in Minnesota where we moved from. Um, and so I started with the gym content, just have my camera shooting random people at the gym, friends, whatever it might be. Um, not really expecting anything to come from it because I bought my camera to vlog my own powerlifting journey. It was My camera wasn't with the intent of let me shoot and see what I can do with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but from there, it was like, he was posting everything and everything that was coming on the social media pages for the bar were all off the phone. And I was like, hey bro, I really don't know what I'm doing with this camera yet, but I know it's gonna look better than straight off the phone. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of how I fell into it. And then from there, he was actually the one that came to me um, and brought up the money topic. And it's super dope because he's the one who also told me like, bro, you can do this for real. You know what I'm saying? Like he, was, he believed in me for creating content before I did. And that's just super dope. Um, but that's where I kind of fell into, okay, I'm getting paid from this already. Now I have a client who values me at this much. I don't even know the fuck anybody charged, you know what I'm saying? But this is what I'm getting paid for this. Why would I accept anything less than that when I know this is what I can produce? You know what I'm saying? I've now built a portfolio. Mm -hmm. It might not be the best stuff on the world or best stuff on the earth, but this is what people are now coming to me for. So why would I do anything less than or why would I not get paid necessarily for work that they know what they're now coming for? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I think that's, a, that's like that barrier for me is like, if you don't know what you're gonna produce, I don't think you should be charging. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If somebody hits you up and it's like, hey bro, can you come shoot this pool party or can you come shoot this lifting event, whatever it is, and you're like on guard be, or off guard because you don't really know how it's gonna go, you mm -hmm. don't know the angles, you don't know, maybe you shouldn't be charging yet, but once you get comfortable to the point where it's like, okay, I know exactly what I'm gonna go in here and do, I know exactly what angles I wanna film, I know exactly what the process of the video is gonna look like, that's when, like you said, your mind switches 
I think that's when it's time to start charging. And you said you said something important there. If you if someone asks you to do a shoot and you got that uncomfortable feeling of saying like you you don't want to do it because right. you're not sure you, it's gonna be good enough. Yep. Don't start charging. Right. Exactly. Keep keep working. Keep building up your portfolio. Yep. Which is fine. Exactly. That, that's we, part of the process too. Is like you're gonna have to wait and, and wait your turn until you are ready to start charging, and then from there start charging real money. You know. Exactly. What I'm you might get the gas money here. You might get the 150 here. You might get the hundred dollars here or there. But it's like. When you start, and that's more show what I, what I should say I'm referring to, is like when you start charging real money, you have to be solidified and know exactly what you're gonna produce. Exactly. It, it don't even have to say that you're the best videographer you know. You might not be as good as you wanna be, you might not be to the level of what you know other people around you are, but it's mm -hmm. like, if I know that I'm gonna come in here and produce this video wherever you're going, produce this video, produce this podcast, produce whatever it is, these photos, and you know exactly what that standard is and the client knows what that standard is, I think that's when it's time to start charging. And another tip for that too is, the business wise is figure out what exactly it is you wanna shoot yep. and build your portfolio around that. Cause there's nothing better than if you say, you know, I'm a, hey, I'm a sports videographer. Right. And then you go to, you know, the Rockets and they'd be like, <laughs> all right, let me see your portfolio. And then, you ain't got no basketball. Right. Or, or you got show. one elementary school basketball yeah. for your little cousin. Or exactly. Yeah, like yeah. build that portfolio in that space or in that niche yep. and go from there. For sure. And that way, when, when you start presenting yourself to clients or people start to ask you, you got a portfolio right. full of it. Yep. Me personally, I wouldn't, I didn't do that at first. I was just shooting, you know, the boxing and then a real estate person to come to me and be like, hey, uh, I'm trying to do a shoe. You got, you know, you, you do any real estate? And I'd be like, in yeah, my head, real estate. in my head, I'd be like, yeah, I shoot any, right. I shoot anything. But then when they ask you, hey, let me see some of your work, right. then you're like, you're sending them boxing footage. It's like, uh, <laughs> actually, hey, yeah, one, yeah. one, two, one, two, we're like, right. it's a different, it's a different niche. It's a different industry. Like, For sure. So if you want to get into multiple industries, you're going to have to shoot in multiple industries. Yep. But what if you just uh, want to do gym content, shoot gym content. Right. And do that and, and worry about being the highest level. Exactly. Building off of that, what would you say the best way to get into different industries? Especially, so for example, we both get paid at the level that we're at. Say you want to start in a new industry, what route do you not take about that? Do you go back to being charging free? Because we both know I've never shot real estate a day in my life. I can come in here and shoot decent content. I'm not saying it's gonna be the best real estate photography, I, but I know the level of content that I can produce, you know what I'm saying? But again, this apartment complex has never seen real estate content from me, mm -hmm. so they don't know what to expect. What do you now do in that situation, in your opinion? I say you got one or two routes. You find a friend that's trying to build up, if like, let's say you know, one of your homegirls or homeboys do real estate. Mm -hmm. Reach out to them, shoot like a couple of listings for them for free yep. and you know, send it to them and let both of y'all grow. Right. And then you have a portfolio and they're growing, right? Yep. Second option is reach out to, you know, these bigger real estate um, brokerages and bigger people in real estate mm -hmm. and offer a free shoot. Yep. And that way, once they post your thing, uh, post your work, you can start telling them like, look, you know, just tag me. Can you tag me? Right. I mean, some of them won't. Of course. But the thing is, it's not the fact that you shot, uh, you shot and then you're paid. Right. It's the fact that you just shot for one of the biggest names in real estate. For sure. So eventually, once that portfolio builds up, now you can start going to everybody and say, look who I shot for. Right. I shot for so-and-so, so-and-so, this person, that person. Yep. Like, that's how you build on that other side of that. So exactly. you can either build it up one or two ways. Of course, again, it is all shooting for free. Right. But you can build it up with, you know, your friends and be like, all right, this is free, no pressure. Yep. I'm just building a portfolio. Other side of that, shoot for free for big names, show them that you can do it. And the big name might even hire you. Right. Or if they tag you, people start seeing like, oh shit, who that, should- like, That next tier down is it, gonna be the people that are after you. Exactly, because yep. guess what? Now that you shot for this person, and I've done it, so I know it works. Yep, I've done it I, too, bro. I offered a free shoot for a realtor. She posted a video, and 
at that point, it was like, oh, who shot this for you? Yep. Boom. And there you go. Now you're on. Now your name in the mix. Yep. And that's, uh, again, I'll, I'll refer back to Gymshark just because that's one of the, the biggest companies that I worked for. Is like, after I shot for Gymshark, that now next tier up, that level of people who are now looking for me as a videographer, took the next step up too. You know what I'm saying? So there's so many opportunities that come from, and the Gymshark shit was a pay too, so don't, <laughs> I don't want it to be misconstrued or, or thought of differently, but like the things that I was able to now reach off of that Gymshark shoot were so much more than that money that I got from them at that one shoot, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, but directing it more towards the, the business side of things is like what um, would you say separates a business or, or a photography business or a videography business from just being a hobbyist? What would that line be for you? Man. Because uh. I know people who just got a camera and they'll have somebody pay them to shoot, you know what I'm saying? Um, but when does it now take that step of like, this is a business, even if it's not full time? Oh, it's, it's all about structure. I know we probably, I know we probably shouldn't get too much into it, but like, <laughs> you know, forming your LLC, yep. all of that, ha handling the actual business aspect so you can start running it as For a business. Sure. Cause until you do, you, I mean, you, you really an independent contractor, freelancer, yep. but if you turn it into a business, you know, and we won't get into a lot of it, but you know, at this point, your camera you just bought right off, things like that. Yep. So that's the real thing that separates, you know, doing it as a hobby uh, versus turning it into a business. A real business. Because then, you know, the thing about it is, I will say this, it's tough, and like you said, being around the right people can get you in there Almost definitely. and running it as, as, as like, you know, independent contractor, but a lot of like, big brands and companies, they want to work with another company, yeah. another business. Yep. So the thing is, it would be good to have your own production company yep. or business to push you out there and say, all right, this is my business. This is how much I charge, Y'all, you know, having the whole, you know, structure. Yep. Because at the end of the day, would you hire Jared that just, you know, who does this. That you seen in the elevator. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Would you hire Jared that you seen in the elevator with who had you know, a camera cameras in his, yeah. in his hand? <laughs> or would you hire One Shot Collective? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. That, that's the biggest thing. Put them thing. both on paper, take the person away from it. The person is the same thing, but when you put it on paper, One Shot Collective is going to look 10 times better every it, single time. Exactly. Most definitely. And then, too, like, you know, going into like LLCs and you know having business emails <laughs> one that's one thing I saw I've, I've learned work like make work miracles mm -hmm. like having at one shot collective behind my my email right because it's, it's it's legit right it's like oh shoot one shot collective.com Jared Harris right one shot collective. that's that's dope right that's better than at gmail.com yeah. yeah so it's like which I personally still have <laughs> I will be honest but that the thing the thing about that business part bro is is crazy because you have so many more advantages if you run it as a business for sure so that's why you have to start to separate it but again until you reach a point where like you know you're making hella bread hella money mm -hmm. that's when you have to say all right i need to start running this as a business for at sure. this point as a hobbyist you making you got a few shoots here and there you know, you're making a little cash here sure. and there, but it's not something that you're actually committed to yeah. and you just want to get side money. Side money, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is fine too. That should be, that should only stay as a hobby. Right. But, one, but if you're trying to get big, bigger and bigger, like branding wise, turn it into a business. Right. Easy. Yeah. I think that's a, I wouldn't necessarily some, say that's something that people are afraid of, but it's one of those things where it's like, you never know maybe I don't want to do this forever. You know what I'm saying? It's like, they might shy away from the fact of like, oh, I don't want to start an LLC and then six months from now, I don't have anybody to shoot for, you know what I'm saying? But I think, especially speaking for myself, is like, when I moved to Houston, I had no idea if it was going to work or not. Mm -hmm. And I didn't start a business right away. I moved in June, I started my business in October, legally. Um, but was producing that whole time. I, I was working at the warehouse at the time, but it's like, my main source of income was shooting content. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that held me back from starting that business was my own limiting factors, you know what I'm saying? And limiting myself and not 
maybe fully turning that dial or whatever it might have been of like, I'm doing this for real, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, and so once I did, and once I started, like you said, making substantial money over and over and over again, then it was like, okay, I know, at least for the time being, that this is good. And I know that it's gonna make money, I know I can make money, whatever it might be. That's when I decided to make a business, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Rather than, a lot, of, some people will just start, hey, I got my camera today, let me go make an LLC, and now I'm ready to start shooting for the biggest companies in the world. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's why I say it goes back to the certain advantages you have when you create the LLC. Right. And, but a lot of times you don't know that because when I first started, I didn't know that I could use my camera as a write-off. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a big, that's a big thing. Most definitely. But you don't process that because now when you're, when you're doing it as a hobby, it's just like, you know, I'm going to just go out and shoot some, you know, a green, green space or yeah. whatever. The city skyline. Yeah, it don't, yeah, yeah. it don't process until you actually start to get more clients and you start to actually start, like, shooting. Yep. So... I think that's the that's the biggest thing or the the gap that you have to close is like knowing when you're gonna turn this into an actual business. For sure. Um, so yeah, man, that that pretty much wraps up the topic that we have for today. Um, that's something that we again every topic that we talk about, I want to cycle back on at least to some extent with every single guest that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a, the the beauty of if you want to call it beauty, the beauty of what the industry that we're in is like everybody's experience, everybody's opinion, everybody's um, livelihood, whatever it might be, is gonna look so much different. Everybody that we bring on this podcast might be a photographer, they might be a videographer, they might do both, but like none of us have the And like, yes, and, and, and building off that is like, yes, we all are now getting to the same point or at the same point, whatever it might be. Some people are gonna be higher or lower, whatever, however you wanna look at it, but like all of us are to the point where we feel comfortable talking about it in public, but all of us got to the same place in a complete different fashion, but we're all to the same place. Exactly. And like all the processes and all the people not wanting to pay and the, the invoices and all that type of stuff, we've all had to go through, but at a different rate, at a different type, at like everything's gonna be so much different, but it's all gonna pertain back to the same situation. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and that's something I'm really looking forward to with this podcast is like next week having our first guest on and allowing them to kind of build on the conversation that we're already having together um, and give a third point of view on the situation because I don't ever want people to think that like, oh, Izzy did it so he has it all figured out or oh, mm -hmm. Jared's doing it while he's working so he has it all figured out because realistically we don't. Yeah. Um, we're just going day by day and we're figuring it out while we're doing it but we're gonna bring out people who have been doing it for 10, 15 years right. who do have it figured out or people who are just starting off and making maybe a shit ton of money that don't have it figured out. You know what I'm saying? And there's there's so much that we can now dive into in these topics that we can keep cycling back on that we'll never get old. And we'll never be, like, we'll never be biased about anything For sure. that we talk about. Just know that everything we're talking about comes from our experiences and we're not saying you should do it the same way. Exactly. Like, we're gonna tell you how we did it and hopefully we can motivate you to kind of like learn from our mistakes yep. and you know, get started even quicker than we, we could. Exactly, that's so. that's all I wanna do. And it basically, again, I said this on the first podcast, is like, all that I want this podcast to be is expanding off of the topping points or talking points on what my Instagram already is. Mm -hmm. And because that's what I want my Instagram to be, or, and it's kind of shifted from that recently and I don't like it, but it's just the, the way the time is right now, for me at least, is like, I want my Instagram to be somewhere that someone can come find as a young, up and coming, whatever, maybe not even young, up and coming, creative, whether it's videographer, photographer, and learn from the first post they see to the, all the way to the bottom, you know what I'm saying? And I think a lot of people building off that is like a lot of people will delete their old stuff or get rid of their old stuff because they think yeah. it's embarrassing. But like, if you go back on my Instagram, every single post that I've ever posted, the worst pictures, the worst like overlays, <laughs> whatever it might be, are still on there because it's learning, bro. It's all part of the experience. You can go back. I think my sister got married in 2021. That was the first time I ever posted on this account because I didn't want the people on my other account to see that. So I made a new account, posted the pictures because I thought they were dope. And now since 2021, you can now see the development mm -hmm. all the way down. You know what I'm saying? And I think that right there teaches itself. But I want to be a place where no matter what stage you're at in your VR photography page is like, you come to my Instagram and now this podcast, and can learn so much, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So that's what I'm looking forward to. 
you what do you look forward to the most with the podcast, bro? Hey, man, I'm look honestly, I'm not a gatekeeper. You're not a gatekeeper. <laughs> no sir. I'm just happy to be able to give out you know free game yep. and you know kind of talk back and forth on experiences, right? And again, just to motivate somebody that's out there that may be struggling with you know videography, photography, whether it be the creative side, the business side. Yep. Just to keep that motivation, that like keep going, yep. and I feel like this podcast is going to tell people like when they feel like quitting, when they feel like this ain't for them, yep. like just keep going. Most definitely, because we're in it. Yeah, I got a full time job. I feel like quitting at times, but for some reason, I get that spark to keep going. Yep, I know you have times where you just be like, man, I, <laughs> it's it ain't worth it. Yeah, it ain't, it ain't worth <laughs> yeah. it. Same thing. So. I just hope to have this podcast inspire creators, business owners, yep. any like any 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 part of like any type of businesses, whether yep. it's entrepreneurs, anybody yeah. who's anybody who's trying to hustle. Exactly. That's what it anybody is. Anybody who's trying to hustle. Yep. This is this is the podcast for you. Exactly. You don't have to be a videographer, you don't have to be a content creator. This podcast is for you. Anybody that's trying to hustle. So that's what I'm looking forward to the most. For sure. All right, bet. With that, I appreciate y'all tuning in to episode two of Capture Craft. I'm your host, Izzy. Over here, we got my dog, Jared. We'll see y'all in the next one.